Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to another Repi of League on Mike here. And Mark here with you for, uh, I guess, not quite the finale. We got another day before Worlds goes in, but we're doing the full play in preview today. You know, we'll meet some of the minor region teams, remember how they got here, and then look at the two sides. And if you've been watching the last couple of years, you have learned to never sleep on the play-in stage. Even if it looks like it should be easy business as usual, no upsets, uh -uh. that never happens. Never happens. And I think part of that is, of course, just the nature of competition and these teams that we get to and how much that desire is to move on to that next stage of the event, as well as this, this just this, uh, the way that it's you know structured out, this play-in stage and what you need to get to that next level there's always opportunity and always room for these upsets to come through and absolutely shake up the rest of the playing field. And before we preview the two sides, obviously, remember four teams getting out. We'll look at some of the smaller squads, how they got here, and what we should be looking out for them. And we start with the least small of all the teams, probably the best team in the play-in stage of that, and that is, of course, PSG Talon, the most familiar of them. We've got the same five guys coming from MSI who made some noise, beating FlyQuest, taking BLG to five games in that series. Obviously, this is a premier organization. They've won seven of the last eight titles including four in a row and by the way highest team kill death differential in the world globally every region they're the only team that's over two for a team kda so yeah they dominated summer a little bit and psg is coming into this tournament with the biggest buff of them all no it's not the wife buff that we've seen in the past with uh Dwayne b but they are coming in with the last dance buff. Maple coming out and saying that this is gonna be the final trip for him, the last world for him. He's gonna hang it up after this. So we gotta, gotta see PSG make it on through this playing stage and get some extra spicy games when we get to the Swiss stage. Honestly, I think the biggest upset would be if PSG doesn't get through. More than 100 Thieves or Mad Lions getting upset and not making it. If PSG doesn't, I think we'd both be shocked. I think everyone would be shocked in that sense from how dominant, how professional this team has stepped up, right? You know, that's one of the things I think a lot of people see sometimes when you're looking at some of the minor region teams, they just lack that structure and professionalism that comes from being in some of these uh, major regions and having those screws tightened on a little bit more. ESG's got it. They've absolutely have it. And when you look at how they play, the strategies, everything that they come up with, that's part of that structure for me in that organization. These players, one of the big ones is going to be, of course, Janjia in the jungle. I think that he is one of these guys in the Plains tournament that does not necessarily have an equal when you're looking around the junglers and what they can offer and what he and what type of pace he can set for this PSG team. Yeah, I think he was pretty much consensus the best player in the entire league, so much so that you even have Western and Tier 1 region guys looking to bots of Junjia because he's been that deadly with this pathing in the jungle spot. Uh, the second seed coming out of the PCS are the SoftBank Hawks, which are from the LJL. We had this kind of new format where the first part of the split, they were playing through the LJL. Uh, they went 19-1 and one basically in the regular season, 5-1 and one in the playoffs. All of those matches, yes, they took down DFM. Detonation focused me who we're so accustomed to seeing at Worlds, and that's four-fifths of the usual DFM roster, but the Hawks had the Evie buff in the top lane to get them qualifying for Worlds again. And they just knew. He was like, man, I, I love hanging out at the LEC studio. I gotta get myself back there this year. And here, here we are. He is finding himself back in the LEC studios for this play-in stage. Soft Bangkok's one of the best things about this, really, for me, is what you look at the growth of the LJL. This is... Uh, you know, SoftBank is uh, an organization that has been involved in professional baseball in Japan, in Japan and has been involved in those things. And to have them finally get success here in esports is, I think, that next evolution for kind of the sports scene, esports scene for Japan and where we're looking at it. Having them get this type of berth and looking successful, getting it against the detonation focus me squad, that dominant team from the LJL in the past, is a good vote of confidence. 
And outside of Evie, you know, we've got three Korean players on this roster. Forrest was the guy who picked up far and away the most MVPs uh, in the league out of that jungle spot. And of course, Vista, another guy we're familiar with. The only other dude on this roster with world's experience. You got to go back to that 2021 Hanwha Life roster. Uh, but plenty of experience on this squad. And again, when they did switch over to that PCS bracket, yes, they went 1-6 against PSG in back-to-back -back matchups. But they ran the gauntlet and looked leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else not named PSG. And I'm going to give them a little bit of some leniency on that one and six record because I think, you know, let's slot in any of these other playing teams against a PSG that is ripping and roaring through the summer splits and ask how they're going to do against them. I think we might see some similar records. So I'm not using that one as the full measuring stick on what we're going to be able to get from them against the rest of the play in stage. Because I think, again, PSG is one of those ones that almost regardless of who you're talking about, you've got to put them in that tier above. BCS, the next big Tier 2 region. Two seeds coming out of there. Obviously, we are oh so familiar with GAM Esports. This is the same squad that, again, we saw at MSI. The same core of Levi and Kiaya that we've seen for so many years on the international stage. Kiaya hasn't lost any form. He picked up MVP in the finals. And, of course, he's playing Cassante like everybody else. But we've got Kenan, Camille, Aurora, Smolder, and TF that he's been busting out also in the top lane. Kiaya, the solo bolo guy from the VCS. Yes, he is still one of those big engines that drives what goes right for GAM and how they're able to push forward. Levi, as you already mentioned, again, one of the very mainstays that everybody, of course, at this point knows and has seen and heard of on the international stage. And I think last year wasn't a very important run for GAM because we had early struggles from them once again, compounding on a couple of years of disappointment, and they did manage to pull through. They managed to get some upset wins. They managed to beat Team Liquid, of course, send them home and pack and as we all remember, but this is definitely a GAM team that has seen, you know, some fluctuation, of course, as we all know, the turbulence that has been the VCS this year, but to still come out as the champion, still to see Kiaya perform the way he does and have the champion pool and, and diversity that he brings to it is one of those strengths that GAM is bringing to the table. Yeah, and of course, the Chaos play style is still always what Vietnam is bringing over to these international events, and do not be sleeping on the second seed vikings esports coming in they finished ahead of gam in the regular season they were actually the top seed heading into playoffs they 3-0'd everybody in their playoff run except for gam and yes they lost 0-3 in the finals but in the winner's bracket side of things it was an incredibly competitive five game set between the two squads they've got international experience themselves with kati and bai both being on GAM in the past, and of course, Shogun used to be on the side in Buffalo, and most importantly, S of M's return to the international stage as head coach for this squad. Oh, but you, you get ready. We're going to be talking a lot of about this in the future, talking about so-and-so player returns. We've got him back, but it's as a coach type of situation. S of M, one of the early ones that we're going to talk about here in the play-in stage, yes, for Viking Esport, and one of the best things about this is I think you can look at how competitive they were in the VCS, how much of a challenge they were to GAM to test on what you're gonna see from them. Because so many times we have seen a second seed from the VCS come through that has just been decimated by GAM, not been able to be that one that top, toppled the top team in their own region at any point. Viking did. Viking showed that they were that challenger. They were able to keep pace up with a GAM in this situation. As you laid out, a couple familiar names still within this lineup as well to the world stage. This is certainly a Viking esport that I know a lot of people, a lot of teams might be underestimating and are going to get bit by this squad. Next, we got the previews of the Americas region heading into 2025. Starting in that CB Law with Pain Gaming. Again, an organization we're very accustomed to seeing on the international stage and players we're accustomed to seeing. Jinkato, Chitan, we've seen multiple times. Karaoke in that jungle spot. And then a couple of Korean imports coming in in classic CB Law tradition. Those are the only guys making their world's debut. But much like PSG, Pain Gaming dominated their domestic region 
looking globally for all of summer, second highest Baron percentage and first blood percentage among all teams in the world. It's been, you know, uh, a slight little bit since we've had Payne make an appearance on the international stage. I think for the last couple of years, we've been accustomed to seeing Loud be the squad that does get the berth from the CB low, but now Payne Gaming. And as you laid out, still some familiar faces from the last time you would have seen them around and still familiar in the sense of just like Loud and, you know, other CB low teams. You got those, those clinchers of the two imports coming in from Korea to be big parts of this team pain gaming they earned it they have as you laid out a very dominant record throughout the cb low i'd be i'd be afraid of this team lining up against some of the the other teams in, in this playing stage and you know obviously loud we became so accustomed with them being just that loud and number one they had a crazy fan base and you know guys like robo and tin owns constantly talking smack yelling the other way don't worry we're still getting that with pain because both Chiten and uh, Jikato in that mid lane, they love talking smack. That's just built into the CB lol, and absolutely, we're going to be getting more of that. And again, if you've been paying attention to this America's Challenger scene with the Tier 2 uh, Challenger squad matching up against the LCS, don't sleep on the CB lol. Pain Gaming, you mentioned, hasn't been here in a while, so they got something to prove. They absolutely have something to prove. And as as the other pain gaming already proved in the Americas, they are good enough to take it home, man, is the way that things can play out. Pain gaming, yes, they are uh, one of the premier, one of the top, uh, you know, top organizations in the CB law that we have seen as far as how competitive they can be. And to not have that opportunity to go, to be the one denied by loud in a couple of these situations, you better believe that they are excited. They are ready for this opportunity to come once around to the playing stage. Blast squad to talk about because we know Mad Lions and 100 Thieves, how they got here. But we got Mavistar R7, a.k.a. Rainbow 7, another storied franchise that we've seen time and time again at these international events. Audi, Seo, and Leones we've seen on the international stage. Worlds last year, and then, of course, uh, Kiny in the mid lane's the only guy making his Worlds debut, but the storyline here to follow is, of course, Summit returning. Second straight World Championship for the former LCS star. Top laner goes over to the LLA and wins some titles in his very first split. Oh, and, and baby, we got to get him into playing stage. Not out of any real fandom type of thing, but you got to get, of course, the matchup between him and APA. And oh, it's it's it, I I'm not gonna say it's a shame because I do want to see Ziggs outside of the meta, but it'd be off as a shame. Ziggs top lane that. summit counter picks it away. <laughs> it's a possibility. I'm not gonna rule it out this year from everything that we have seen. But when you're talking about Rainbow Seven, Mobistar Seven, what you're looking for them is I think to finally pay off on a lot of this potential that we have seen. We've talked about them so many times that there is an opportunity that, you know what, okay, if someone falters, someone struggles, that door's open. You can find your path to get to that next stage. And they've been unable to bring that type of level, that type of performance that we have seen from them domestically to that international stage. So that's going to be the challenge for me is not only, of course, the young players that you mentioned, uh, you know, in the mid lane, but talking about Audi, talking about Leon, the players that we know and have seen here domestically and on the international stage, got to see them find a way to perform and, and make sure that this happens and you do get some success for Mobistar. Now we dive into the actual bracket. How do we know what's going on? Start on that A side of things. And this is where you're sweating. As an LEC fan, number one, you're on PSG's side. Immediately, they're the favorites. I don't think they're dropping a series to anyone to advance through. But even you look at that opening round, we were just hyping up Vikings Esports and saying they're very close to the level of GAM. There's absolutely a possibility that MDK is dropping this opening series. And knowing what we know about MDK and how we have seen them play, that's also part of why you're feeling that Viking leaves them vulnerable in this matchup uh, right away at the beginning of this one. The silver lining, of course, for Mad Lions is that you don't necessarily have to beat PSG to find your way out of the play-in stage. That's gotta be, I think, one of the things that you're protecting against. You can't go in necessarily with that full mindset that 
everything is, you know, is all dandy. If we lose to PSG, you got to find a way to, to hype yourself up and bring that edge into that matchup as well. That starts with not dropping to Viking Esports. That's going to be the big test. And when you look at the young players on the Mad Lions, there is a little bit of that question mark on what type of performance, what type of stability we're going to have right out of the gates in a matchup like this. Obviously, yeah, the big question mark is going to be how do these four rookies perform on that international stage? It's a little bit easier for them because it is in EU. They're probably going to feel like it's not that crazy a difference because they've played for the entire year there. But I know we were riding high and excited about them when they got that initial upset against G2. But since their miracle run to finals in winter, they've only won two best of series over spring, summer, and those season finals. So even though that G2 upset was there, there's still not a ton of positive things to pull from the last few months from MDK. That's really one of the biggest issues that you have with having any type of confidence for MDK. And when you think about, okay, well, they did get, you know, they of course they clutch up and get the little wins that they need to make it that difference maker at the end of the day where they do get this type of opportunity. It is absolutely riding on the coattails of that hot start that you had at the beginning of the year and whether that's about you actually having it all together and that was the perfect run and this is how you just got to find a way to replicate that type of thing or if that was about the LEC and the rest of the competition level at what they were at that you were able to dominate and be at that type of stage. We got to find those answers and one of the biggest ways we are going to find it is what has happened in this preparation leading up to this play and stage for the Mad Lions Koi. They have had arguably compared to anybody else, the most amount of time off before this event, and they should be as prepared as possible. And if they aren't, that's where I think a lot of people are going to say that, yeah, the, the Mad Lions that we have seen for the last couple of months, that's the Mad Lions that they are, not the Mad Lions that was able to win out in the, uh, in the, in the winter split, excuse me. Yeah, we'll see what kind of read they have on this new patch, this new meta, because as you mentioned, yeah, they have had a lot of downtime, a lot of time to tinker and kind of cook something up in this meta. And if anyone's going to be cooking, you know, it's going to be Mirwin in that top uh, lane. He has to have something special for the top side. That That's when they started coming online here towards the end of the year is when he went back to not just being on Cassante tank, boring tank lane meta. That's when they thrived in winter. That's when this team is at their best. That's the way they're getting out of this side A bracket is through uh, the skills of Mirwin. B side of the bracket is a little more open. I've heard less open, I would say. Uh, 100 Thieves, obviously that LCS matchup against R7 because they don't have PSG. 100 Thieves, probably the favorites here, but much like MDK, there's a question mark of how did all these rookies appear on the main stage? Sniper going up against Summit obviously is hyped up, but Sniper is the youngest player at this world championship. So how does he deal with the pressure? And Sniper is one of the players, I think, that in this playing stage that has given us the widest array of performances as well. Unfortunately, it's one of the ways to look at it because we have had some absolute stinkers from your boys, some big time mistakes, some big time, you know, a couple ego plays here or there that don't go as well type of thing too. And that really cost 100 Thieves in some of the games that they did end up losing in the LCS. And on the same time, he has been that driving force. He has been able to be a dominant pillar of this team that they can play around, that they can trust. In a lot of these type of matchups, sometimes that's going to be the one for me on the 100 Thieves, which one shows up as far as a sniper in that top side. Of course, there are other factors when you're looking at this 100 Thieves team on why they can do well and why you know, you're poised in this situation. But I think for a lot of people, it comes down to simply, do we get the 100 Thieves that showed up against Cloud9 and the way they were able to play and move and get things going right for their team? Or is this going to be the one that showed up at the LCS Finals against a FlyQuest that just got absolutely rolled over? I think, you know, whatever level Sniper's going to be learning at this playing stage. But for me, this run's going to be all about quid. I think... Listen, three out of the four teams have a Korean mid laner in this side of the bracket, which is hilarious. But I think Quid, the level that he was at in playoffs, him and River combined is enough for 100 Thieves to run through uh, this side of the bracket. Even if they ultimately match up, you assume against Gam in that winner side, Kiaya versus Sniper is a terrifying matchup. I think Quid is going to be too good to allow 100 Thieves to not advance through. I think you're going to be needing River big time on that matchup is what I'm expecting against Kiaya, Mr. Solo Bolo in a 
knowing how just how eager a sniper is to entertain some of those conflicts that can happen with a solo bolo king I, you, when you're talking about quit, I think the big one for me is I can agree on that. This should be the tournament where he needs to put a stamp. He needs to take another step forward in his career. Coming over to 100 Thieves, I think it was obviously a little bit of that rough, slow start that we all talked about and, and examined quite you know, severely. And then we got to the next stage where he did find a way to flourish, to excel, to progress as an individual in his career for this 100 Thieves team slowed down a little bit this past year, but still had those moments. And especially as 100 Thieves got better towards the end of the year, he was picking up a bigger part of the leadership share for this team. Want to see that come through at this play -in. And of course, River, much like Bad Lions, they're drunk, they're the only guy with world's international experience coming into this. So looking to him to lead his boys through. But yeah, 100 Thieves and Gam going to be the big favorites to be the top two. You see anything fishy potential for SoftBank or R7 to make some noise and upset one of these boys? Uh, I, I'd love to say it for R7, but I think it's too much of my blindness for the LCS is going to come through at that point. No matter how much is still pulling that I want to get them to finally pull off and get some of the success and show some of that domestic power on the international stage. The other one I'm looking for and waiting for I'm thinking pain. I think in pain can be a, a disruptor. We've already seen that happening through the Americas tournament, what's been going on. I don't think that stepping up a level and going to the play and stage of worlds is gonna be anything that dissuades that from happening type of thing. And Viking Esports, that's gotta be the one for me. I think a lot of people might be a little hesitant on that one again, because they don't wanna go all in on anything VCS type of situation. But I think that you can believe in what you saw, the way that Viking challenged Damn this year that they are going to be at that quality level that they will be a difficult out at this event. Yeah, I'd, I'd be way more surprised if 100 Thieves or Gam are not getting out or even dropping series. That A side, outside of PSG, any of the other three teams, I think, could be sneaking in to take that second seed, which obviously makes that the much spicier one. But just remember, you drop a series, you're not out. There's a loser's bracket. I feel like we have to rehash this every time with this new format for Worlds. But just a couple days away till we get the song dropping. And then, of course, the debut of that play-in stage. But that is it today for League on Mark York and Mark with you. Wonderful people. Thanks for hanging out. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.